hey everyone, Aaron here. Welcome to KPC Underground. This is the podcast we do right from right under the stage here at Kirkland Performance Center. And we're here tonight. I'm very excited to be with Stephen Kellogg, who has a show here tonight. It's Stephen, right? It's not Stefan. Stephen. It's spelled with it's spelled like Stefan, but it's Stephen uh, Kellogg. And then also a very special guest. This is Sophia Kellogg, who is just happens to be. Uh, his piano player, and also his daughter. So very <laughs> excited to have you both here. Thanks for um, coming on the podcast. Thanks for having yeah. us, man. Yeah. This is a, what a great setup and l- lovely ferns. Yes, and- thank you. If you're just listening uh, <laughs> via audio, uh, that's, a, that's a clue that we also have video on this podcast. So you can watch it on YouTube or Spotify. Both have vo- uh, video components to them. So check it out because you can see their lovely faces then. And yes. my lovely face as well. So uh, sure. yeah, excited that y'all are here. It's going to be a great show tonight. What kind of a day are we having here in the Pacific Northwest? This is like absolutely incredible weather and it's so just, we're, we're loving it. Yeah. yeah. No, I mean, uh, part of the reason for these, uh, this little mini tour that we're doing was that Soph really wanted to see the Pacific Northwest. I'm glad yeah. the sun came out for me. I would like, well, yeah, I was going to say, I would like to say that this is what it's like all the time. That's not the case, as you can <laughs> probably tell by everyone just basking in the in the sun because we're still so starved for pretty, it. Up pretty here, much but. when we when we got to Portland on like almost most of the conversations we overheard while eating or walking down the street were like were weather related. Just the sun, yeah, yeah, yeah. When it comes that we're, we're vitamin it's D really starved. Been, I know it's, it's rainy, but it's been particularly rainy. It's or just what? yeah, it's just been like cold, uh, and we're and by the end of like the nine month period where it's just rainy and cold. If it's just extra rainy and extra cold, people just start to get pissed. Like they're 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 not only depressed, they're angry about it. And so it's like when the sun comes out, that's it's just the. It's right. just even more wonderful. So, yeah. Yes. Well, so here's my thing about that. And I don't mm. know because I've never lived in an environment yeah. like this. But I find the sun stressful because it makes me feel like I need to, like, go out and do things. And I'm a, I, what I really want is permission to read a book and yeah. chill. And I, so, so whenever we visit very sunny climates and my yeah. friends are like, isn't this incredible? How could anyone right. live anywhere else? I'm like, I kind of dig, you know. But I don't know. Maybe it would be too much out here. I will say, you know. I think for for a melancholy guy such as myself, you mm-hmm. know, artists. I'm an artist as well, and you you know how you know how it is. Yeah, you're right my, there with I me. I got the blues. Uh, it's like the the Seattle sun or the the Pacific Northwest summer is about the amount of sunlight. Like w- once once it gets to September or October, and then it, the cloud cover comes over and it starts raining. It is also a sigh of relief. I yeah. will I will say, but many people won't admit, but they actually have the same. So I I sort of share that with you, where the sun is kind of. You know, the, it's I'm like an indictment. These, these it's like you should faces. be outside yeah. do exercising. Yeah. I'm like, I don't want to do that. So but. yeah, but we love it when it comes out here, and I'm glad that uh, y'all are here on such a beautiful day. And I hope you get to yep. uh, be outside and, and enjoy it because it is just amazing. Um, first question is actually um, Stephen for you. You've had obviously. A, a, you know, a, a long career, very prolific, and a lot of albums and a lot of music's been released. But also, um, next to that, it's been you've you've be, been able to communicate your story in other ways, whether it's through like your TED Talk or through books or through films. Mm-hmm. And what I, you know, I was just curious, what you know originally inspired you to reach beyond just your music? Because a lot of a lot of musicians are like. That's the only. That's where I can. Where, that's where I'm comfortable yeah, yeah, communicating yeah. my art. And not a lot of people could get up on, you know, like a TEDx stage and go, "Hey, here's my, you know, five steps for whatever sure, it is." And sure. So yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. just curious what what originally inspired that. Well, it's it's a cool question, and you know, I I think I think there's two parts to the answer. I think on the one hand, it's that I've uh, always been search. I always would like to reach more people. You know, I, mm. I, I, my, I, my goal was to reach a ton of people. I mean, right. like I started out like a lot of musicians thinking like, let's try to be rock stars, you know? Right. And I'm very happy with the life I have. And I'm not sure, you know, that uh, like no regrets, but also sure. you start to go, mm. I just want to reach more people. Yeah. And maybe, you know, not everybody likes this type of music. Uh, so maybe if I write it down in a book, though, I could reach more people. And I started right. to realize that I do get the same... I love I love to share with others and connect in that way, and so you realize like oh I can get this from from doing a talk or doing right uh, you know um, 
uh, my latest get rich quick scheme is I'm doing some stand up <laughs> and things like that. Okay. And it's, I mean, it's terrifying stuff. And I'm like, sure. I look at my wife like, all the guys you could have married, right? You right. Know? <laughs> so, I mean, that's one of the things is just like a desire to reach more people and to understand that yeah. that maybe in different mediums, it's more what I do is more palatable to some people. But, yeah. you know, I think the other thing is that I really do like to to just, I just like to find new things. Like, I, yeah. you know, I like, I like moving around. And my, my father-in-law asked me last week, he said, do you think you're like doing too many different things? And I was yeah. like... <laughs> Yeah, like totally, of course, <laughs> probably, but, but, but like you know, no regrets. But here yeah. we're out here, we're out here doing it. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, and, yeah, and so you know, so if you're. I watch Sophia, and, and it's almost my wife says that the two of us. She's like, it's like watching when we argue. She's like, it's like watching you argue with you. But I, I mean, but you, you, you do a lot of different things too. Like I, I, I see you doing it, and it, and it looks fun. And I and I think that that probably it's similar. I mean, I don't know. Do you you like doing a lot of different things? Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. There it is. yeah. <laughs> well, Sophia. I mean, I was going to ask you too. You know, um, you know, obviously, you you got recruited to be in this band. You know, and I, you know, I hope you you guys worked out the finances okay with that and everything. And you're, <laughs> I'm sure you're being yes. paid very well. No. Um, but, uh, you know, how did that come about? And I know, you know, I have sort of a later question. You, you, uh, you've, you've kind of collaborated with your family creatively, um, you know, and, and, and I guess just, yeah, how, how long have you been doing music? And what, uh, you know, how did, how did your dad convince you to come along with him on this trip? And, and, uh, and how has that been for you? Yeah, well, I started playing piano when I was five, and okay. I wanted to quit. Um, when I was like eight or so and then my dad had one of his musician friends John McLaughlin like <laughs> call me and be like try to convince you, you don't yeah. want to do this and he was right I right. I didn't quit and I you know obviously it's led to me getting to play with my dad and yeah. I've you know I love it every time I love mm. to play music so it's really cool to do it yeah with my dad who you know has a, a lot of experience with it yeah it is interesting. I have a 13 year old son and he plays a little piano and, and like a little, uh, a little drums and stuff. But the parent to child, uh, sort of teaching relationship is, is often fraught with a, a, additional, oh. you know, it's like, you can't really be their teacher. Maybe some, some parents can, but it's, it's just funny I, that yeah. you called your, your other musician friend to convince you. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> I don't music teach, you had no, I, yeah. I cannot <laughs> teach these guys. And I, and I didn't, and also like our deal really at a really young age was, like people paid money to come to this show. So, so you can't come on stage just cause you're cute. But if you want to, if you can add something to the show, yeah, you're always welcome. And so when Sophia and her sister Adeline, mm -hmm. and then later her other two sisters, Noel and Greta, they would come and they would, they would do cool things. But then, um, then something happened a couple of years ago where, the singing got so good and they blew past what I was capable of on the piano and yeah. really like <laughs> the music got really good where I do find myself being like, is there any way you guys can come do this right. show with me <laughs> yeah. and stuff like that. And, uh, yeah. you know, and, and I, it's such, um, it's just such, it's like, it feels like the family business and I feel yeah. it feels fun to do it. Yeah. I obviously am thrilled for Soph and her sisters to do yeah. anything that they ever decide to do. But I love right. that I, every time that you're like, yeah, I'm like, yes, it feels, right. it feels very, very exciting. Right. You know, you have had the opportunity and we're, we're about the same age. I, I looked it up and we're roughly the nice. same age. And uh, you've had the opportunity to meet a few of your uh, sort of childhood heroes and even go on tour and collaborate with, uh, with them. Uh, what, what is that experience been like for you? You know, the, the old ad is like, never meet your heroes. Cause you sort of find out right. whatever they're terrible people. I don't think that's the case with you based on what, you know, sort of what I was reading, but talk about that experience and meeting, you know, maybe, you know, uh, specifically counting crows and that whole crew um, among others, but yeah. uh, just what was that experience like for you, you know, listening, obviously listening to them growing up and what a, what an amazing, uh, legacy they have just in, in that kind of folk rock alternative space and they just yeah, shaped I'm, so much. I mean, you so. remember then that when those records, when the first three records came out, yeah. it was like, it was just, I think, you know, you go to the record store at midnight to get right. it. And, um, you know, uh, the way that I met, I had met, um, 
Dave Bryson had worked on a record of ours without me meeting him, and he seemed like a nice guy. Mm. But I hadn't. I had like come across him a few times, and right. and I never really want to overly insert myself into a, a, a situation. You of know? course, yeah. So I was on a plane, and 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 my wife said, "Oh, I hear Adam Duritz is on this plane <laughs> too." And I said, you know, it's cool. Like, I'm good. I got their. I'm so grateful for the music they put in the world. I, I've I've met him a couple of times, but it you know it doesn't stick. There's nothing to. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna bug him or whatever we, it is. Yeah, yeah, and we yeah. ended up. So we we get off the plane. My wife goes off to find the oversized baggage situation. It ends up that Adam and I are like the last two people at the baggage claim waiting for bags. So, you're, <laughs> so it's literally like if I don't talk to him, like, it starts to feel right. weird. So I finally just like, hey, Adam, I'm Stephen Kellogg. We've met uh, a few times, but right. I really love, you know. Right. So we ended up chatting. Mm. And then I walked over to meet my wife. But I didn't. That was it. And, sure. and he comes running across the terminal. <laughs> and he's like, Stephen, Stephen, here's my number. We should like catch a movie sometime. Or she looked at me like. What the hell just happened? I thought we weren't going to say hello, you know? Um, Amazing. So, so for the first few years that I knew Adam, though, it really was like it was not related to business. And I think he sort of, sure. um, he met uh, my family. You know, we would, he's very into movies. So we would go chill mm. and, and the girls and, and you know, he's a great cook. And he makes th- great butter noodles. The best, <laughs> right? Amazing. Do you live, you, you live near, nearby he's, each he's other then? He's in the or? city and I'm in okay. Connecticut. We're both okay. in New England, yeah. you know, and, and, uh, and he, I think, in, it sort of embraced my, nor- the normalcy of my career this, and, sure. and as much as I'm like, I love the way he can casually share a story about, so, I, so I'm with Bruce Springsteen right. or something. You know, it's just like, <laughs> I love that stuff and it yeah. never goes away for me. I would be right. lying to say that it ever goes away. Sure. Every single time I see a text or we do something and then and then but the the touring that we did last summer mm. and then the girls came on a big chunk of that tour uh and sang with me and then and then got invited by Counting Crows to sing and I mean that sensation of of standing between Adam Duritz and my daughters like it took 30 years. Pretty cool. Yeah. It doesn't make you any money, but you go, I am so glad I stayed in this right. game. You know, right. like this, mo- for this moment. For this like moment. This is mm. why, like, yes, I do too many things, but also this moment just happened. Yeah. And I, and no, you know, and that is special. Yeah. Um, and, and I think, That's when, can I, can I, can I, can I co-opt a question and say, when Go did it, you yeah. guys realize when did you real? Did you realize right off the bat that Adam was like a rock star, or or <laughs> at what point after me being introduced was that like a thing for you guys? Um, I mean, I think like getting to like go to his apartment and like see all that was really cool. But he was just so friendly and like open that it just wasn't a normal. There, guy. Yeah, it wasn't. Didn't really yeah. feel like that until we like went on the stage in their set and like. Right to see the crowd and everything it's like okay yeah this is yeah. real <laughs> this is like really awesome right um did you did you listen to their music then a- after that or yeah, yeah. well we listened before I sure mean, you know my dad would play it around and things yeah. like that but um yeah Adeline and I especially because we were like in some like we would get to go on stage with them we definitely right. listened to them during and after right um yeah, so we were definitely familiar with the music, right. so it made it even more fun for the parts where we got to like watch, even just right. watch a watch a great band perform. Yeah, you know, and, and so in that case, that's like a dream scenario where you meet somebody and right. they're cooler than you think they'll right, be. Right, right. A lot of people you meet um, and you share the fact that you're in the same business, and it is a pretty small business. And it's neat just to just to look around and say, okay, cool, I'm keeping good company. Yeah, we may not be best friends, but we're keeping the right company. Um, and then right. this week, because I am starting to do more stand up and I'm working on a show and doing these things, I have a very very passing acquaintanceship with Jim Gaffigan, okay. and I have been reaching out for about a year, right? Um, saying, could I just ask you a couple of questions? Sure, and he called i didn't wreck up the number i didn't recognize the number i picked up and he's like steven it's jim gaffigan i have five minutes no and i you know and and what was awesome about that was i just got to ask him some questions right to somebody who i have wild respect for he is a wildly busy man yeah i don't think that we're gonna hang out i'm not gonna like text him all the time you know but um so meeting your meeting your 
heroes or interacting though it's just like I don't need more from them. And so yeah. if they are a little edgy or whatever, I, I give people the benefit right. of the doubt. And I'm and I'm and it's just kind of like, hey, even just the opportunity to say thank you for what you put in the sure. world is cool. I, and I think most people too, you know, I remember listening to an interview with Paul McCartney and and you know how he said he doesn't mind when people come up to him and oh hi Paul and you know, love your music or whatever, but it's when when he's made to feel when he when people actually dehumanize him and and they're like they don't even talk to him they just go up and take Stand the selfie without the, even yeah. Yeah. He, right. he's like then I feel like a monkey or like a the performing monkey or like a I don't know what like a circus animal or something yeah. because you're not and so I think that's that's a testament to like treating someone like a human you know you're not trying to get your selfie with Adam Duritz or whatever you're like okay the guy is like I don't I don't want to bother sure. him or whatever. Sure. But I'll strike up a conversation. I'll say something that's that's you know true and you know authentic or whatever, yeah. and then just leave it at that and not not go now. Here's here's everything I want from you, you know. Or no, whatever. I know. So I mean, I think, it, that feels yeah. that feels. But you know, and I have met a few people who are remarkably generous. Like if they're if mm -hmm. someone's up for it, uh, we did a show with Wallflowers and Jacob Dylan. We're chatting after, mm -hmm. and he's like, "Hey, man, let's get a picture." And it's like, I wanted a picture to be able to say to my dad, like, look, it's me and Bob Dylan's son, right. you know, like, <laughs> I wanted that, but I wouldn't have asked for it because I yeah. did for that reason. Yeah. But he know, he, you know, he, he know, you know, Noah Khan did that too. He mm -hmm. was like, he's like, hey, let's take a picture when we played a show with him. And it was like, it's a very generous act on someone's part. Yeah. But it's really, I think, essential to having a, that you don't, you can't like go, you can't just like pull that from people. Like, yeah. Or if you do, you, it needs to be like, would it be possible to take a picture? Right. I don't, you know, like. Allow them to say no and then don't yeah. get mad at them if they totally, do. You know? so, totally. Totally. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And so, yeah. It's yeah. really interesting. I've thought a mm. lot about it because we, you know, we we sort of just brush across all these fascinating moments yeah you know and uh i'm glad we're not like hanging out in la all the time with a lot of stars because yeah. it because it's distracting hanging that, out yeah. with famous people right i get really distracted like by it you yeah know? and the, the just the spirit there is very i don't know you got to be really cut out for it you know to live in yeah. somewhere like LA. <laughs> <You> <laughs> like, let's just say that you need to be you know, so secure you gotta you gotta I, really I, I yeah. like wither in la yeah. on a regular I, basis you know i'm curious sophia other than counting crows you know um who who are some of the artists that you're like that you've grown up listening to or or that you're that you're excited about that it would be like a dream for you to meet one day Definitely Taylor Swift. <laughs> uh, yeah, of course, uh, always Taylor Swift. We yes. saw her at the Eras tour in Tampa. Um, oh, you did? Okay. And that was like dreamlike. Just so yeah. actually, I did meet her when I was six years old. Oh my gosh. That was a very like core memory. I will never forget Absolutely. that. Absolutely. Um, and there was a picture to prove it. Yeah. I'm not lying. But <laughs> it, was, it was like a meet and greet or, so, or something like that? Yes. Or, yeah, okay. Um, yeah. My dad's friends need to breathe. We're opening for her okay. at the time. So, gotcha. Yeah, but she would definitely be someone who, like, her just her lyricism and her yeah. art is, I just have admired since childhood, she, still now. She is absolutely the best. We're doing a, we, we, have, we started this communi community choir here uh, at KPC, and, and the next uh, the next session we're doing is the community choir Taylor's version. I saw that. And, uh, oh. So it's all Taylor Swift songs, and I'm leading the band. I'm, I'm, I'm in the band for it. So I get to be in a Taylor Swift That's cover awesome. band. What do you play? For a day. I play a few instruments, but I'm, I'm playing acoustic in the band, and then just uh, That's going to be so awesome. fun. She's a, great, she's a great artist. Just learning and those songs, you're like, Every one of these songs is good. It's like, how do you pick just 10? You know what I mean? So, but, but that's yeah. a case where having that picture, like, I feel like there's a lot of situations. You don't go up to people in restaurants. You don't ask to take pictures. Right. They're walking down the street. They're busy. Yes. But it's like having that picture has allowed us to relive. Like, it really yeah. happened that we that we did stand there and she did... For all the charismatic people I've met, I don't know that I've ever met somebody more. I mean, in two minutes, she made us feel like the most important people in the world. I love, I love hearing that. Yeah, that's amazing. It was unbelievable. Yeah. Taylor, can't. Taylor Swift. Who, who else? Who else for you? Yeah. That's an obvious one. Yeah, ever, we all love right, her. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, from childhood till now, or just who are you? Who are you into lately? Um, I'm really into this band Tame Impala from Australia. Love Tame Impala. Saw them at the Gorge. You did? Yep. Amazing 
show, one of the I best shows I've ever seen. I love them so much. Yeah. I saw them at home in Connecticut, okay. and it was crazy. It was their first show in Connecticut, actually, okay. so okay, wow. I get to say I was there. <laughs> Lasers and just crazy yeah. and just so The whole so production good. So is good. amazing. Yeah. I love that, we're have, that we have like a musical simpatico thing yes, going here. Yes, I, I'm an enthusiast of many, you know, I've played music my whole life, and I feel like the older I get, the more the more music I appreciate, you know, and, and I think, um, you know, a while back I sort of, I sort of gave in to the fact that I love pop music. You know, I think I was resisting that for a while because sure. I come from Gen X and, uh, I think, you know, I was into sort of the Seattle, you know, grunge scene for a while, typical nineties, like, you know, bands, Nirvana and, mm-hmm. you know, and all of them. And that was like, you know, a big middle finger to pop music basically. But, I don't know. I think 10 years ago or so, I was like, you know what? I love a great melody and a pop no, song. And I, I just will can't. say, I'm like, too, yeah, it, it moves that, me. that mm. 90s like era has really been hitting. Like mm. For me lately, the Sundays, I'm like a big mm. Sundays yes. fan right now. So. Absolutely. <laughs> I can't. Yeah, it's wild. The way you've embraced the 90s kind of blows my mind. There's something with Gen Z, I think, and nine. it's like there's a parallel thing, I think, with Gen X where they there's kind of a... Uh, we don't care. We're, we're, we're not really established. We're going to like what we like. We're going to do what we do. And it feels similar to Gen <laughs> X. I feel it in my kid too. And I'm like, you're cool. Yeah. I like you. <laughs> totally. Totally. I know. It's so, great. Obviously much cooler than, than me. You know, our kids are just cooler than always, us. It's just a fact. Yeah, always. So, I, 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 yeah. I like, I hang, we do hang out and usually most times Adeline, my next younger daughter, uh, is with us, and it's really yeah. fun that we're getting to like hang out and stuff like that. But I do f- hear myself say things, and I'm like, I feel like such a dad <laughs> in a way that I'm uncomfortable. I'm like, you're I around sound your just kids. like <laughs> my dad, and and I'm like, how do I not sound the way I no, sound? Why you just do gotta I feel lean this? Into it. You just got to lean into dad, <laughs> mode, especially dad. when you have your your literal child on your tour with. I know, so, yeah, I know. Gotta, yeah, just go for it. I need to let you go because I've we we we're just jabbering on too long, and you have um, oh, this is fun. Uh, kind of a meet and greet to get to. I did have one sort of final yeah. thing, just about um, you know, I I. Uh, was you know just listening to some of your stuff and your latest song your your single that you just released how to say goodbye mm. and there's a beautiful um, uh, video that goes along with that with a choreographed dance piece by uh, I think your daughter Adeline, Adeline is that right yeah, yeah. and so talk about that and how that you know um, well t- two two parter uh, how did that sort of come about that collaboration and then you know just talk about maybe you you. Uh, are not afraid to embrace uh, something that is vulnerable, sad, painful. Mm. And I resonate with that. And just just talk about your experience with, I guess, maybe the healing power of being able to really lean into that and not, you know, not shy away from those feelings, even when they're uncomfortable or sad or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Oh, God. I, I mean, at some point, you just are who you are. And, yeah. and I think that... I start. I wish. I wish somebody had been a little more. I wish I'd had somebody in the beginning of my artist life who just said, "Just like figure out as best you can who you are, mm. and then just be that on steroids." You know, like that's yeah. what that's the best you can offer, um, because you do run around trying to do what you think people want you to do, uh, right. and I and I want people to be happy. Um, but I also, if I felt like I was like abandoning my values would quickly get edgy and upset and like, sure. and you feel like that, oh, I'm being difficult then. So you go through the, all this process and all my favorite moments, you know, would always be these moments where I was leaning into the, the heart stuff and sharing like the blues of, you know, you know I'm yeah. not depressed, but I am very melancholy. And, sure. I, you know, that's kind of the way it is. I, I see the world and all its sad beauty. And I just think, wow, it's like being a turtle without a shell. You're just taking it all yeah. in all the time. Right. And everything that lets the good songs happen, you also are highly emotional. You feel like you can't, you don't get one without the other. So, yeah. So the beauty of middle age has been like, all right, this is just who I am. And sometimes um, I'm going to, my emotion will push me past the point. I'll be playing and I'll get choked up and you want to sing better and stuff. But I, I, but I, I have to believe that anybody who's at my shows or checking out what I'm doing at this point 
understands what they're signing up for. It's like, yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to give you the truth as I see it, but I yeah. can't, you know? And so that also, I got to be self-conscious, like, Oh, have I written too many songs about family? And, you know, mm. am I writing the same themes over and over again? And then more recently, I just thought, no, you know, like this is, I feel like this is what I'm was put here to work on. Yeah. So, uh, when the opportunity came up to do a video and Adeline, who's such a beautiful dancer, uh, and we had this little budget and I thought, let's do this together. Like I yeah. love Willie Nelson. I love that he tours with his sister and his son and, you know, yeah. and, I, and I just, and, and it made me be like, why not? Why, you know, yeah. I, I, I don't have to wait till I'm of Willie Nelson's stature to just start living that life. Why can't right. I hire and work with my kids? Because then we'll have that together. Yeah. And, it's going to make me love that video and it's going to make me really want to promote that video and not feel like I'm being cheesy or something right. like by saying, please, everybody watch this video. I'm so, you know, I, I'm so moved I'm, by I'm what it is, it. you and, know? Yeah. Um, and that's a song that Sophia and I wrote together. So it was a oh. real collaboration in that wow. we had kind of written some of the lyrics together and, and also with our friends, Sam and Jimmy, who wrote some of the music and, we're going to debut that song tonight. We haven't ever played it live. Oh, amazing. But we're going to play that one tonight. And, and Love uh, it. you know, I, I appreciate you observing that stuff. I'm, it's nice to know that there's people, I, I do question like, is this cool? Are people yeah. just like <laughs> enough with you and your fam, like your tears and your family? Like I, you know, that's the little like voice in your head that sure. like, you're not, what you're doing is not good enough. Yeah. You know? And you're kind of like, uh, can you be I'd quiet? Rather- I'd rather have that than the alternative, you know, which is, you know, which is um, people who are on the road all the time and never present and not even there and don't involve their families and then and then leave and then you, you know what I mean. I'd rather ha- I'd rather have someone who is really centered on that. And so I didn't I didn't I never got that impression, you know, listening to your stuff and it. I thought it was just a beautiful, you know. I mean, I I. Y- thing that even your kids are interested in, in, uh, in, you know, helping you out in that way and collaborating with you. And I think that's a beautiful thing. So, yeah, it's, it's been fun. This has been a fun yeah. next chapter yeah. of, uh, my, my thing, you know, and, yeah. and you, I, I want to keep doing new things. Like, yeah. I want to keep tr- checking out new stuff. So right. This is like all part of it. Um, right. But, and I, it's, I'm getting used to it. So sleeps for college in September and I'm like, it's gonna, I'm going to miss her a lot. Yeah. Are you, so are you the oldest yeah. then? Okay. Yes. So you'll be the first one leaving for college. So that's, that's going to be a whole Ugh, other thing. Don't get me started, Aaron. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Yeah. But I've, uh, I've kept you too long. Thank you so much, both of you, for uh, you. sitting down yeah. with me. All of you out there, I'm going to link that, uh, that video in the, the, um, the description below or in the comments. Check that out for sure. Also, be sure to check out stephenkellogg.com. That's Stephen with a P-H and Kellogg with two L's and two G's. Is that right? It's yes. totally yeah. right. Uh, for upcoming tour dates, music, uh, stuff about, you, you can go watch his TED Talk from way back in, when was that? 2013. Uh, 2013, 10 years ago. Still re- really cool. Uh, his book, there's a film, there's all kinds of stuff. Definitely go there and check that out. Really looking forward to the show tonight. And thanks so much for sitting down with me. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for having us. Great questions. Thank you so much. Thanks for joining us for KPC Underground. If you're enjoying this podcast, please consider supporting KPC at kpcenter.org slash donate. Your generosity helps us keep this and other programs going at Kirkland Performance Center. Be sure to check out our website for the latest events coming up. And hey, we'd also love to hear from you. Please rate our podcast, like, subscribe, comment, do all that stuff. And if you have a specific question or an idea for a show, email us at podcast at kpcenter.org. Thanks for listening.